Hello. I'm in Heswell right now, on the west coast of the Wirral Peninsula. Currently heading north along the Wirral Way footpath. About a mile and a half further up the coast is an area named Heswell Fields. And it's there that I'm hoping to find somewhere to sleep tonight in my British Army bivvy bag. But first, I'm just going to show you a little bit of Heswell. Heswell was first recorded as a hamlet and developed from a cluster of cottages around St. Peter's Church in what is known today as Lower Heswell. St. Peter's is an active Anglican parish church in the Diocese of Chester. The church is dedicated to Peter the Rock, one of the twelve apostles of Jesus Christ. It is built from sandstone a lot of it locally sourced, with a slate roof. The base of the church tower dates back to 1306, making it one of the oldest buildings on the Wheel Peninsula. It's worth noting that the site would have been a place of Christian worship long before the church was built. The sundial in the churchyard is a striking feature, constructed in 1726. The church was struck by lightning in 1875 and seriously damaged, but was completely restored in 1879 by Liverpool architect James Francis Doyle. 
Other notable Doyle buildings include the Grand Hotel in Llandidno. And the Liverpool Royal Infirmary. Along with many other Merseyside churches. The graveyard here contains 14 war graves from the First World War and 10 from the Second World War. A place worth visiting is Heswell Dales. It's a site of special scientific interest and a nature reserve on Heswell's north side. The views across the River Dee are beautiful. The place is filled with a unique blend of nature and wildlife. There are even a few lizard species that call the place home. The Dales are one of the best examples of lowland heath in this part of England. You simply can't find anywhere else like it. We've got sandstone cliffs and outcrops. A brook known locally as Scarbrook, which is mentioned in many old smugglers' tales. I strolled around for ages looking for the brook, got lost a few times in the process. Well, I didn't find the brook. In local folklore, stories tell of a strange green figure that haunts the dales after dark.
just to think a large part of Heswell and the surrounding areas would have looked like this a few centuries ago. It's gone, very cloudy, there was like a half moon high up in the sky there above Wales but the clouds have covered it up, there was no real sunset to see, uh, I'm hoping that uh, the clouds might clear. get to see a bit of that moon before bed no there's people here I've never been here before myself just gonna have to see what I can find This isn't what I was expecting. There's people over there. Not ideal, but I think it's just kids. Sound jovial enough. There's a lot of midges over there, all mosquitoes. Where I'm going to look to go is somewhere away from the path, but with a bit of flat ground and a bit of a view. 
just see the last of the sun out there. Disappearing on the horizon. It's getting very dark now. Uh, I am using a Samsung Galaxy S20 to make this video. Uh, usually I'd use my old Samsung Galaxy S8. So, getting dark. Picture's still fine. I'm quite happy with that. Just gonna see how it holds up through the night. Try and get some better shots out there of the river. Heswell, once upon a time, boasted sandy beaches, busy ports and ferry points dotting the west rural coastline on the River Dee. The area was favoured by smugglers for many centuries. In the mid-1700s, upriver, the city of Chester struggled to maintain a pace set by the growing port city of Liverpool to the north on the River Mersey. The River Dee's natural channel, which was silty and too shallow for bigger ships, passed along the world coast. It was decided to cut a new 16 foot deep channel on the Welsh side of the river to help Chester keep up. The Wirral channel was displaced by this deeper Welsh channel and began to silt up at a rate never seen before. In 1815, Parkgate lost its Irish ferry service due to the silting. By the 1860s, the Wirral Channel had become too shallow for even small ships to sail beyond Heswell. The sandy beaches vanished, replaced with salt marshes and river grass. Chester never did manage to compete with Liverpool, because it took two tides to travel between Chester and the Irish Sea, whereas Liverpool could be done on one tide. The Welsh side of the River Dee is the main beneficiary, with a maritime industry that is still booming today. The boatyard remains at the bottom of Banks Road in Heswell, but the channels are slowly becoming too shallow to navigate safely. It seemed only a matter of time before silt cuts the channel off for good. The area around the boatyard is scattered with boats. A lot of them, dead and left to ruin in the Hesville mud, will never set sail again. The area has become known as the Boat Graveyard, and possesses a real melancholic beauty. So this is the spot for the night, it's on one of the cliffs, on the field. And this is where I'm going. I'm travelling light tonight, so I didn't bring my cooking gear. So I've just brought ready-made food. This Nordic reindeer jerky. This 
This Isle of Man Celtic Red Cheese. And a pink lady apple. A couple of bottles of water as well. What I have with me tonight is my Aegis Max 800 down sleeping bag. These new Aegis Max sleeping bag slippers, hand warmers, cheap pillow, cheap gloves, thermal top, thermal bottoms. And a thermal balaclava. So that is my gear for the night to keep me warm. Notable people from Heswell include the cult lead singer Ian Astbury, <clears throat> who I know as the lead singer of the Doors of the 21st Century. Um, ex Everton and England footballer Paul Bracewell. Late great radio DJ John Peel and cricket legend Ian Botham. Just some people who come from Haswell. You've got the name Heswell with Old Norse origins of Hesleywella, which translates to Hazel Spring. But Old Norse names are pretty common on the Wirral Peninsula. You know, just down the road, you've got Gayton. <clears throat> which translates to Gateton, which is like a goat farmstead. Um, you've got Airby, which is was a beer, which actually means Irish settlement. And uh, in Airby, there's a place called Hesketh's Field which goes back a long way and can be translated to Old Norse 
as Hesta Skeef or Hesta Skeef and the area used to be used as for horse racing had horse racing tracks built on it like you know back in them times like over a thousand years ago so you know and then you've got West Kirby which was Vestry Kirk Jabir you've got West Kirby and then you've got Kirby which is in Liverpool was Kirk Jabir um, that's about it really you've got anywhere that ends with B is a uh, beer which is like settlement in Norse you've also got Mel's which was originally named Mella which is old Norse for something like Sandbanks land of the Sandbanks you've got Tramia was Tramia which was like a crane bank you've got Raby was Rabia it's just loads, you know. It's pretty interesting. Forgot to mention Thurston, which was Torsten's turn. Like Torsten's village or Torsten's settlement, and Thingwall, which was Thingvalia, which was an old Norse meeting ground. I was just sat on my bivy, relaxing, and heavy clouds have come in, and uh, it started drizzle, drizzling rain. So, bit of a surprise because it did, it didn't forecast any rain this weekend. So, don't know what that was about. It said like chance of precipitation went up to ten percent through the night but it doesn't always happen like that you know so normally if it isn't forecast and it's like really low chance it doesn't rain but it did rain and the clouds towards sea are getting quite dark now so see what happens Here are my Aegis Max sleeping bag slippers. Got them off AliExpress. Gonna be putting them on now and climbing inside me bivvy. The rain is still trying to fall. Is one there's two. I'm gonna put my shoes inside my rucksack and I'm gonna put my rucksack inside a bin bag. Put it at the side of me. There we go. Shoes and rucksack packed away for the night. There are many stories of ghosts in Heswell. It's even said that the devil drives a black hearse through Heswell in the early hours of the morning. The area I'm camping at used to be rife with smuggling of the ships. It is said the locals would say, 
The ghost walks tonight when large smuggling operations were underway. At a time when people were superstitious, villagers would avoid the supposedly haunted areas. Many apparitions have been seen on the shoreline too. Apparently the ghosts of three smugglers have been witnessed on land near the boatyard, engaged in some sort of fight. Several local brooks and gullies have old ghost tales attached to them too, which is interesting because they all would have been used by the smugglers. A story which is genuinely scary is the tale of the headless dog. It isn't exclusive to Heswell though, as it's most frequently spotted in nearby Barnston, but it is known to cover a wide area including Heswell. Apparently a big black dog with no head has been seen by many people, I have a stud statue still, stalking people or even chasing after people. I reckon I can deal with a ghost or two, but I'd rather not have to try and outrun a headless dog tonight. Right, it's almost midnight now, so... I'm going to try and get a sleep, set me alarm for 5.15, so the plan is to be up and away, pretty sharpish before 6am, so wish me luck, it's going to climb into this baby, probably, make sure it reaches over my head. Not a cold night to be honest. It's a bit breezy, but other than that, not bad. Good morning. It's currently just after five AM. Been woken several times now by a light rain falling. I hear to come out like inside my busy property. Right over my head. Didn't have any issues, but it's actually quite nice to wake up in like a light rain fall on. There's like some sort of young birds around here, like seagulls or river birds. It's been screaming since first light. I'm not going to wait for my alarm to go off, I'm just going to start getting up now. One bite there. One bite there. There's a couple more on my arms, but not too bad overall, I don't think. Did have an onslaught of mosquitoes at one point.
this ages max sleeping bag it's never let me down yet used it a few times now very happy with it my plan is to see about getting a thermal sleeping bag liner for the winter and trying to still use this for season because my other sleeping bag is a snug pack sleeper extreme and it's about six or seven times the size of this bag it's got a much better heat rating but this bag has never let me down like you see so and i've used this on the top of barren hills in wales during storms and stuff so can't complain Looking a bit rough, eh? Feel a bit rough, but not too bad. I think my hay fever's kicking back in lately. I'm gonna have a. Gonna have some breakfast now, I think. So, for breakfast, for breakfast I'm looking at a Tesco, all, all butter chocolate croissants. And a Starbucks mocha frappuccino. Would I like than the hot coffee right now? Hot black coffee. To be honest. But this will do. Not bad.
starting to feel a bit more human now. Huh. Ducks flying south. This was where I was. No trace left and all that sort of stuff. This tide is on its way in now. It's causing a really big sandbar out there which is going to eventually get washed over but the Whittle Channel is coming in, you can see the currents are picking up over there. One last thought for you. If you can conquer your self perceived shortcomings, then nothing stands in your way to a fulfilled life. Because it's daft to allow things to play on your mind and eat away at you. And no, one, no one really cares anyway and it's only you that it affects so self-doubt and all that. Being self-conscious, what's the point? Just be happy, you know, accept things for what they are. Don't worry about what you do or you don't have or what you can or you can't do or just enjoy yourself, you know, appreciate what you do have, what you can do. So, don't worry about your shortcomings, focus on the good. And it works, you know. It's what I've been doing lately anyway. 
Konki ist schon gekommen. Dann gehen wir hier back auf South Down the Widow Way, now back into Hiswell. And then I'll be heading home from there. So, thanks for watching if you did. Thank you to Hiswell for having me. This could become part of a series on the 100 of Will Aberston. See what happens, but I'm off. See you later.